There is no more brutal place than the South Pole. With the temperatures getting to as low as 89 degrees Celsius, it makes it the coldest place on Earth. Being at the South Pole can be compared to being on another planet. The average temperature on Mars is negative 60 degrees, which is the same as the average winter temperature at the South Pole. Such conditions are unsurvivable, and the tragic story of these British explorers is proof of that. Led by Robert Falcon Scott, their goal was to be the first to reach the South Pole. It was Scott's lifelong dream, and he carefully planned the journey. The plan was working as to reach the South Pole after about a month of traveling. This looks like a victory photo until you notice that the flag on the tent is Norwegian. They were beaten by a Norwegian team led by Amundsen. Scott and his team were heartbroken. Scott wrote, Defeated, they had to travel 800 miles to return from the South Pole. That's where things went south. One by one, they started to die. The first man collapsed and went comatose, and the second man suffered from severe frostbite, which made him unable to walk. He decided to sacrifice himself, thinking he loved the team. The last two bodies were found eight months later by a search team, along with their diaries and photographs. They were trapped in their tent by a blizzard and did not survive. But this tragic story didn't stop humans from exploring the South Pole. As of today, 21 countries have permanent bases in Antarctica, with no plans to leave. In fact, right now China is building its fifth station in Antarctica, which will be finished in 2024. But how did people manage to inhabit this seemingly uninhabitable place? In this video, I'll explain how Antarctic bases are able to function in such extreme conditions. Antarctica is the driest place on Earth. I mean, it's a desert after all. It's so dry that the humidity often gets to as low as 0.03%. For comparison, the average humidity in Los Angeles is about 50% and 75% in Miami. Even in the Sahara Desert, the humidity averages 25%. Such low humidity is the reason why the annual precipitation at the South Pole is only 5 cm, which is very little. But if it snows so little, why is there so much snow on the ground? Although it rarely snows inland, it does snow quite often on the coast, and given that Antarctica is flat and windy, the snow gets carried across the entire continent. Consider that it never gets above zero, which means that it never melts, and you understand why there is so much snow. Snow accumulation is a big problem and stations are often completely buried under it. In winter they are buried and in summer they have to be dug out. And this is a problem because it takes a lot of fuel, which is scarce in such a remote location. It also wastes staff time that could be spent on something else. This is why newer stations are elevated. Take a look at the Amundsen Scott Resource Station. Not only is it built on legs, but it's also shaped like an airplane wind, which helps to reduce the accumulation of snow even more. The fast-moving winds beneath the station effectively help clear snow from the area, greatly reducing the need for manual excavation. But since some snow accumulation is inevitable, the station was designed the way that it can be raised. These hydraulic jack columns allow the structure to be raised in 25cm increments, thus extending the life of the building by decades. Another problem has to do with the ground that supports the structure. It actually stands on a glacier that slides 10 meters toward the sea each year. This is why the marker marking the true geographic South Pole has to be moved every year. And because different parts of the glacier move at different speeds, the buildings are constantly in danger of being torn apart. Therefore, the connecting pads between the building modules are designed to be flexible. With an average temperature of negative 28 degrees in the summer and negative 60 degrees in the winter, it's crucial for the building to stay warm inside. Usually, the stations are heated by the excess heat from the power generation. But Princess Elizabeth Resource Station doesn't require active heating at all because of the way it's insulated. It maintains its internal temperatures using only incoming sunlight and the heat produced by human beings and the station's electrical appliances. Proper insulation is key, because it allows for little or no heating. If generators fail, evacuation can be difficult. Usually, the conditions in winter are so extreme that it is physically impossible to land an airplane. Even if the pilot is willing to risk their life, 
it will be physically impossible to land an airplane in one piece. It's easier for astronauts on the ISS to evacuate than for people at the South Pole. At any moment, astronauts can board the spacecraft they came in and get to Earth. People in Antarctica, on the other hand, will have to wait until summer for the plane to be able to land. That's why I think the people who work there are brave. They risk their lives for the sake of science. Thank you for watching. See you soon.